Hey guys and welcome to another episode. We are now on episode 9. I hope you have been enjoying the series so far. If you have, drop a comment below and we'll love to discuss what your favourite episode has been, what you've been enjoying, what you've learned, what God has been saying to you throughout all these episodes. And if you haven't watched them so far, I'm going to need to ask you why. Because quarantine you've definitely been at home you ain't been going nowhere but it's okay <laughs> all the videos are available for you to watch at any time and just drop a comment below if any of them have spoken to you and yeah so today's episode is about our relationship with god and today i have brought a very very special guest don't say we don't do anything for you guys we're coming in big and hard every time so yeah we have a um a special guest by the name of jordan and myself who will be the host dorothy and we will just be talking about his walk with god we'll be sharing real life stories and real life issues that we face as christians on a day-to-day -day basis and just things and stories and tips on how you can walk this um journey we've got together so i pray that all of you guys will enjoy that you will continue to stay tuned that you will subscribe share the share the thing share the content you know um and yeah spread the word and we'll see you on the flip side bye okay episode nine of relationship with god we have jordan in a dizzy building say hi Hello. jordan say hi to the people okay Hello. <laughs> right so we have brought you here today to kind of discuss your journey of god um your testimony and just everything really about life and being a christian so i'll start with the first question how have you been since lockdown i've been good you know i think the only hard thing is that i haven't been able to travel and like do what i want to do in terms of work but other than that i've been all right like I keep a small circle anyway, so I've been able to see the people that I need to see. At first, it was tricky because I had to adjust to everything and try and work from home, which I'm not good at. But once I've got into the swing of things, I'm all good to go. And the question that everyone wants to know is, have you been washing your hands? Have I been washing my hands? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I've, been, I've been washing my hands before Corona existed. Yeah, but have you washing them? Have, are you washing them more since Corona? Yeah, like every time I come out, come in, a little sanitizer, a little. Sh 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 sh. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. So, for anyone who doesn't know you, just tell us a bit about yourself, like your journey, where you were, who are you, who are you, Jordan? Who who are you? <laughs> um, I am Jordan. <laughs> I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm my uncle, I'm a friend. In terms of work, I work in the in music and entertainment industry as a music director and a producer. And I serve in the house of God, Kensington Temple. And that's what I do. Cool, cool, cool. So I guess you can get into like your testimony or your story. How how did it all happen? How did um, you get to know God? I grew up in a Christian household. I grew up, I grew up in a house that um, my mum's a praying mum, my auntie's a praying mum, my auntie's actually an intercessor. So from a young age, I was exposed to a lot of things. Like they'll take me. I remember at six years old, I was at Benny Hinn Crusades and like Morris Sorella Crusades, like at a young age. So I was exposed to the presence of God in a way. So even though I didn't make the declaration, I knew what the presence of God was and I knew what the presence of God can do. <laughs> well, I'm down in my shadow, come on! <laughs> <laughs> so I knew what the presence of God was and I knew what it could do. Later on, um, I made the decision at a kid's net. Like, Katie used to do these net meetings. They still do, actually. Kid's net, where I made the decision to give my life to Christ at a young age. I think I was no more than 10. I think I was like eight, even eight. Like I was young when I made that decision. Yeah, around about that. But I think that's my foundation of my faith and my belief definitely came from home. My mum and my auntie, my aunties, I should say, they definitely made the foundation where 
they wasn't shy to expose me to Benny Hinn Crusades and Morris Serena Crusades and the power of the Holy Spirit. Like I was hearing people screaming in tongues when I was five. So it became the norm. So it was only right that I made a decision for myself. So then where do you think, so growing up in that kind of environment and you're hearing about, um, you're hearing about God, you're having these experiences. When do you think you decided, okay, this is not just something that my mum or my aunties have done, but I actually need God for myself? When I had, when you... I had to experience them for myself. So I had to, I had to treat my own testimony instead of biting off of everyone else's. And I remember that day because that was an, there was an encounter with um, one of my mentors. Only he brought me on an encounter. And that was the first time where I experienced the Holy Spirit for myself. I experienced the power of God. I'm not saying in a sense where I was falling out and mm. screaming and manifesting and doing all of that, but I definitely realised at that moment, no, God is actually real. Like, there's actually a higher power than, than what I can do for myself. And I realized at that point that when the Holy Spirit was, was filling me and doing all of this, I realized that I can actually do anything as long as I stay on this path and I, I um, submit to his will, I submit to his plan, which is the best plan, I can actually do anything. So I think that's when it hit me, when I experienced the Holy Spirit in myself. Mm. So um, what would you say? So I think one of the common things is that... Um, Many, many of us have grown up in Christian households. Yeah. You've been exposed to our parents. Like, even I was exposed to my mum, like, praying at 4 a.m., like, <laughs> pleading the blood of Jesus and doing all these things. And I'm thinking, mum, we, we need to sleep. But then there's a point where you have to decide for yourself. Like, you're old enough to decide that, okay, I've been told this, I've heard this, but now I need to make that decision for myself. So what would you say to those people who have like similar experiences. They're like, oh yeah, but I go to church all the time or my parents are even pastors and da 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 and all this stuff. I'm a Christian. Like how mm -hmm. would you, or what would you say to them that will make them realize that it's not just about that. Like at some point you do need to make that choice. Yeah. The best, best thing I'll say to them is that they've got to realize that Christ is very, Jesus is very unique. Jesus is not, of the old he's of the new in saying that each person that he's created he's created them for a plan that is separate to their mum that could be a pastor of a church their auntie that could be an intercessor the only way they can figure that out is by going deeper how do you go deeper you have to go into his word you have to you have to go into his presence how do you get into his presence worship how do you find out about Jesus? You've got to find out about the man that you're trying to, to attract in a certain way. You have, to, you have to date him and create that relationship where you understand that my walk of Christ is my walk. My, my faith is my faith. You know I mean? So I would encourage them just to go deeper. Don't give up on going deeper because sometimes it's easy to look at someone else's walk and be like, damn, man, they, they look like they're really in, like they're locked in. But everyone has a different way of expressing their walk of Christ. And I feel like God's got a unique plan on everyone's life. So I feel like that person, I just tell them, go deeper, dig into his word, listen to as much, listen to as much, listen to as much things that you can possibly surround yourself by people that are, have the same goal as you. Because mm -hmm. I, me, for example, you're probably going to answer this later on some of you mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> like, just surround yourself around people that have like-minded, like-minded goals. You know what I mean? Definitely go deep into it. That word of God, I'm telling you, man, I was talking to my friend about it today. There's not a thing that you can't find in that word. There's not a thing. Sweet. And then um, I'll say, so since, since you decided to make that decision of giving your life to Christ, how has your life been since then? Okay, do you want the Christian answer? <laughs> the I want the real 
we I told them, I told them we're giving them real life, real <laughs> stories, real people, real issues. Give it to them, Jordan. We ain't holding back. All right, so when I gave my life to Christ, that I was young, but I was still in this box of church, 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 church. So that's all I understood. I only understood church. Mm. Come in, and when I mean church, I don't mean the people. I mean the system. So coming out of that, when I was going to like you high school, college, I started to see colour. <laughs> I started to see black and white. I started to see, oh, you can do that. Oh, that. Oh, wow, you can. Oh, you can turn up. <laughs> I, started to, <laughs> I started to see things like that. And when I accepted... When I decided to fully focus on walking with Christ, my life actually went upside down. Like it didn't, it didn't actually go to plan. Like it got harder. It, it to a point where I stepped out of the church. I was doing my own thing. I was sneaking in church though. Like I'll go to the evening service just so that none of the aunties would ever approach me. I was doing that, but I was living a one foot in, one foot out life because my life became harder. So I wouldn't. Say, I would say this. I would definitely say when I decided to take my walk seriously, my life got on. I'm happy. And the thing is, it was meant to get harder. Like if you if you look into the Bible, when when Christ says to to follow me is to deny yourself. Denying yourself ain't an uh, overnight job. Mm. Get me. Take up your cross. Take up your cross. I don't want no tree on my back. <laughs> yeah. So like, it wasn't. It was never meant to be. Oh, Neverland did it. No, it was meant to get harder. But that's where faith played a part. Get me. I had to believe in what I confessed, and I had to put faith into my feet and walk it. Hundred percent. And I think I like what you mentioned about taking up your cross because I think sometimes as christians like there's a lot of stories where it's like oh we were lost and now we're found and which is true and um you know we've come to christ and life is all good but i think people sometimes miss out on the fact that life is still hard regardless and mm -hmm. we choose christ not because we want a perfect life but we understand that he's perfect regardless of the life that we have and he is able to see us through the ups and downs so even when you were having those challenges you recognise that God was still God and yes. that's what kind of got you back into, you know, having faith and everything. And he was following me everywhere I was going. He was with me mm -hmm. in the night. He was with me when I was at, um, yeah. <laughs> Come on now! <laughs> he was with me everywhere. He was with me everywhere. And like, that's why my relationship with God is special because the fact that he was with me when I was, during that time, if I was Jesus, I would have let me go time ago. No doubt about it. I was Jesus, bro. You can do your thing, and I'm done with you. But the fact that he still continues to like pour into me, give me ideas, and still accepts me as his child, I'm mm. yeah, man, I'm, I'm blown away about that. That's true. So, I'll say for those who are still questioning the faith, like they're still questioning whether God is real. Um, or they feel like they've done too many things in their past, or they're even currently still doing things. Um, what would you say to people who maybe they do believe in God, but they just think that they are too imperfect? They just think Christianity is full of perfect people, people who can quote the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, go to church, do all of this stuff. Like, what would you tell them? First thing I'll tell them is discover Christ for yourself. Mm. That's the first thing. Because a lot of time people look at other people and think that's the picture. I'm going to say a very bold statement right now. And people want to come for me, come for me. 80% of Christians on planet Earth don't act like Jesus. Period point. I'm talking from the altar down to the pew, down to the, to, to the girl sitting at the back. <laughs> So when people say, I'm not good enough, what are you gauging that upon? Because to be honest, you're never going to be Christ. That's why you need Christ. <laughs> and Christ, if you look at the Bible, he never really encouraged, he never really wanted to use perfect people. In fact, he built his disciples off of people that 
weren't the most likely to be picked. Again, David. David had a wandering eye, but still was being used by God. Moses had a star. Joseph went through his trials and tribulations when he was sold by his brother. So that shows me like there's a pattern that God likes to be broken people. Mm. So for me, the more broken you are, the more usable you are. Now, that doesn't mean break yourself more. That just means acknowledge that through your brokenness, God can come and make you whole. That's it. To the person that feels like they can't go into church, the building, because they're scared that people may look at them a certain way because they dress differently, they got an ear piercing, their hair is a different colour. Understand this, come as you are. Us as human beings and Christians, we can't change you. That's the first thing. The Holy Spirit does the work. We just, we just, we just notice that there's a seed and we, and, we, and we sow into you verbally. The Holy Spirit does the changing. So I think the, the changing that happens is nothing to do with us. And I think that's the issue that the church has to solve. But that's another story for another day. <laughs> but I think really and truly to that person that feels like they're not good enough, come into the church one day and speak to five people and ask them what's your testimony. And you're going to figure out that there's a little mess in everyone. Mm. Everyone has mess, man. It's just who's ever real enough to open up their mess. Like, don't believe in the lie. The Bible says... The truth will set you free. So if you continue to believe in that lie, you're not going to be set free. Until you believe in the truth, which is the word, and which is what God has ordained for you, then you'll be set free. Mm. That was good, man. I don't pop and pat myself in the You back. better preach, I'm Pastor Jordan. <laughs> Somebody pass the offering. Our PayPal is there. I'm joking. I'm joking. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah. What you said is very, very true. I think, I mean, there's two things. I think, um, Firstly, yeah, every Christian person is imperfect. And actually church, as many people refer it to, is like a hospital. It's like, it's full of sick people. But at the same time, I do believe that as we submit to God, we God is the one that will help us to become more like him. And yeah. so I think we do God and the gospel disservice when our lives are contradictory to the things that we say we believe in in the sense that if somebody somebody should be able to encounter us, somebody should be able to meet a Christian and be like, okay, you're not perfect, but this is a snapshot of what Christ is. This is a mm-hmm. snapshot of how he would treat somebody else. Yes, we're not always going to get it right, but then I think that's where honesty comes in. And we could be like, oh, yeah, you know, God does say we should love our neighbor, but in this situation, I just want to pop off and do yeah. whatever. And that's, that's normal because you're human. But I think... Um, it's recognizing that we are trying to be more like Christ. Mm. And as you were saying, we can't do that without God. That is something that we are constantly doing. And so, yeah, it is something that we have to work on because people just think as soon as you give your life to Christ, you become perfect and you don't have your old thoughts, your old habits or your old life. Bruh, you still have those thoughts. The thoughts don't You're change. A, there's a journey to this walk. Yeah, I mean, there's a process. And I feel like everyone, when Paul said, yeah, I'm not there yet, but I'm, I'm going to press. He said, I'm going to mm. press. Well, mm. everyone is in that press until we see Jesus. Let's mm-hmm. not get twisted because I don't care how saved you are. I don't care if you know the Bible back to front. I don't care if you know theology. I don't care where you are. Someone can annoy you. Someone can trigger out a side from you. Someone can make Preach. you think. Of, someone, can, someone can get underneath your skin. So that means you're obviously not that perfect because if mm. you that I knew, he was getting spat on, he got whipped, he got punched, he got abused, people didn't believe in him, people mocked him. Get me? Let me go on the roads right now and someone mocks me. I don't think I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Yo, what's up with this? So it's the ones... I think everyone needs to realise the process and the journey mm-hmm. and allow God to be God. Mm-hmm. Get me? It's amazing what God can... It's amazing what can happen to someone if people just move out the road and let God do God. Preach, let God be God. Let God be God, like geez, some people just be rolling out like they're the ones that died on the cross, and I'm like, nah. We don't yeah. need another one. We already have the one. <laughs> we already have the one. <laughs> we chill out with us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my days! But yeah, that is so so true. You just need to let God be God, and yeah. you know, let people come and come as they are, and God will 
Like, because when people have real encounters with God, nobody will need to beg them to read their Bible. Like, no one will need to say, oh, come here, do that. They will do it by themselves. And so I think we even end up reducing what Christianity is because we're like, oh, you need to do this and you need to get rid of this and you need to do da 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 And it almost becomes like um, a to-do list. And that's not what Christianity is about. It's out of your relationship with God yeah. that many things change and many things are dropped. So that was right. a word. Come on, you better tap your neighbour and say that was a word. That was a- <laughs> We're not allowed to touch our neighbours anymore. Oh, yeah. That's so, so true. That's a good question. That moves on to my next one. So during quarantine, how have you, um, considering we're not, we haven't been able to meet up in church physically and maybe you haven't met like all your friends and all that stuff, how have you made sure that your faith in God has been grounded? in this quarantine because i never relied on the church to be the backbone of my spirituality my spiritual walk of god i've never i've never looked at i've never put so much weight on kensington temple to make sure that i am on my my walk if i'm at home i'm i'm gonna do my worship time if 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 i'm at home i'm gonna read my word before lockdown was happening Mm. i was already so coming into lockdown, it wasn't really a difficult transition. I think the only difficult transition was the Sunday. Mm. The Sunday was difficult because I'm I, I'm used to, I like the energy of a congregation. I like especially because I minister in my church. I'm a, I'm in a worship team, so it's difficult doing. It's difficult worship. For me, it's not difficult worship, and I want to be careful how I say it before people make it see, make it see like a beautiful crowd. No, but <laughs> it's, it's, I love to see people worship. Like, I gauge sometimes when I'm on the platform at church, I'll look out and I'll be like, that person's worshiping. Let's, let's push for that person. Mm-hmm. Getting less, less. Now we're going to stay on this song. Let's, let's push for that person. But I think now, I've stepped into a mode where let me push for myself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let me push for myself. So like, I speak to my cell leader every day, reading the Bible, worshiping, coming up with new ideas and concepts of how I can add to the kingdom. Because one thing like, was this, we was listening to a sermon that just went on Sunday. And one thing that was said is that it's not about church, it's about the kingdom. So I feel like a lot of times I went before lockdown, my priority was the church, not the kingdom. And the kingdom is everyone. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the, the kingdom is for everyone and is everyone. And everyone can have, and everyone needs to add to it somehow.